You want to say morning to everyone, Nick? Good morning, everybody. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than here right now. So it's day one, the morning of camp, stack and tilt camp. As the sun comes up, everyone's getting ready for the morning session here on the first day. The range is all laid out. It looks pretty cool with all the pyramids of balls. We've got the seats for the students. Andy's gonna go through the clinic. He's gonna explain how this whole thing works. We have a system, the grid, and how that all fits together. This is such a interesting educational part of this, uh, this trip this session and uh, yeah, the students typically get to rest for a bit but they're taking notes as we go. As we said before, this isn't a lesson, this is an education. So grip, alignment, posture, stance, all important but variable which would lead to the question what is fundamental and where to start and also how can I measure golfers of different skill level because um, I can't measure it by grip, alignment, posture, stance and I would suggest that the first function of the swing is to make consistent contact. You have to hit the ball. The control of the low point of the swing or the bottom of the arc. You know, so I swing and I hit the ground. Pardon me there, uh, Nick, if I hit you guys. But with the grasp, you see as I swing where my club is hitting relative to this line, I swing and I hit and I'm hitting in front of that line every time. And what would be the chances of me swinging and hitting the ground behind the line, Timo? Wouldn't happen. What's the chances of me missing the ground? Zero. Wouldn't happen. I didn't miss the ground. I didn't hit behind the line. I had a pretty narrow dispersion there. We could take that test and go right up in the hotel lobby while everyone's checking in or at night having dinner. I could sit there by the door where everyone goes in to have dinner with this line with the club and say, hey, you might have a couple of swings at this line. And I, we could correlate handicap very closely to where their club hit the ground. Um, so I would say the first task that you have to, uh, that a golfer learns to master is the control of the low point of the swing, the where the bottom of the arc is. Having said that, um, I could make consistent contact. I could, you know, pop down at the ball, make consistent contact, and um, it still wouldn't make me a good golfer because I, you know, only hit that 40 yards. And I can't play just with a model with a swing that only hits the ball 40 yards. I've got to have enough distance to reach the, you know, the par threes and one, the par fours and two, the par fives and three. I've got to have enough distance while making consistent contact. So now my swing has two functions, contact and distance. And uh, then the, th the third fundamental, I would say, uh, the third function of the swing would be to control the direction. I always say that you can't learn golf taking lessons, okay, because there's, there's too much to it, right? You, there's too many things that can change. But what you can learn is a system so that when you play and are playing, um, you can learn to recognize what you're doing. And in that way, when you do go take lessons, you're further along than the last time. The center, the arm and the shaft make the radius. Timo's nose is the ball. So if I set the radius at the setup and I put the butt of the club, say, four inches ahead of the, five inches ahead of the leading edge of the club, you see how the radius is shorter. I can't reach Timo. So in this case, if I came in, I'd hit high on the ball and I wouldn't hit the ground until the radius reached its longest point or its inline condition, which is this case is in front of Timo or in front of the line on the ground. Alternatively, if I put the butt of the club ahead of the leading edge, say five inches, shortened the radius, swung down and for whatever reason the wrist uncocked, the radius reached its inline condition sooner, <laughs> the low point moves back and I crash into t or I hit behind where I started. Golf is played on an angle. We stand at the side of the ball to swing the club on a tilted angle, the path of the club would move in an arc. 
the path of the club would move in an arc, and the path of the hands to move them on a tilted angle would also move in an arc. I mentioned these two arcs on the ground not only help us understand where the club head speed is going to come from, but they form the basis of a mapping or visual reference system to show me where to go. And it seems stunning to me, as I say, when I look back all those years and all those tournaments I played in, that I had no mapping system. I go out each day before the tournament, college tournament, I'm practicing my guts out every day. We get ready to tee off. Coach, it's, it's time to go, Andy. Coach, I need three more balls. I gotta find something. I'm scrambling every day to try to find something to run to the tee with. So, and I look back on it as if I just had this arc to start from every day. If I started from the same place, I could pick up where I left off. And I would have the same mapping system and I could start the same place, be it in Spain or Miami or Tampa or, or San Diego. I could start in the same place. That has a huge impact on your feel and your awareness is starting from the same place over and over and over again. Angle it over and I'd have a projection into the air for where my hand pass should go. And then I could do the same thing. I could do the same thing on the follow through. I can move the stick straight, angle it over, hold it in the air, and I'd have a projection in the air for my hand path in space. I'd have a routing system. And this is a huge um, step for a golfer to learn where to move their hands around the, the, the body. And if I were going to design a shot, next thing I would do would be to add a ball. I've got a... That's where the problem Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's all great till you have to hit the ball, right? Yeah. And when I put the ball three balls behind the center, the radius is now angled. The radius, radius is now angled to the center line by the three balls. The radius is angled the radius is angled to the center line. And the angle of the radius to the center line is the foundation of hitting downward at the ball. We got a design shot. And the shot says that the ball should start to the right and curve to the left. So I should be able to put the ball behind the center, line the radius up, configure the face open to the target close to the shaft, and transport the draw around the arc. And you see how the ball would barely curve to the left. That's a predictive model. I expected that ball to curve to the left. It wasn't an accident. Okay? It was by design. Then begins the process of powering up. Right? How can I... Andy, you're only hitting that ball 80 yards. You've got to hit it farther. How do you begin the process of swinging faster? On this one, before I go back any farther, before I make my swing longer on either side, I'm going to swing harder in the same length. So I'm not going to go back farther, follow through farther. I'm just going to swing faster. Goes to the shaft, transport the draw around the arc. You see, I got, now I got a little bit farther, right? So there was an insight into the clinic that Andy gives at the start of camp. That whole clinic there was two hours long. I condensed that into a few minutes for your pleasure, for your viewing pleasure, but the truth of the matter is you really need to experience that clinic in person. It truly is something special. And now for the students, it's time to get into the fun stuff, the hitting. We've got multiple stations up here on the driving range. Uh, we've got students working directly with, with Andy up here. Um, and then they go through different stations down here on the range. We've also got some short game and some putting that I'm going to show you. Let's take a little look at the short game station. Billy's down here helping a couple of the guys. Um, we'll take a little look into what they're getting up to. Now, when you look at down the line, I would say there's a little tiny bit of overkill. You've definitely stood a little bit taller and closer, but I would say getting to the point of, you can see how it just comes out of line with the right elbow slightly. Can mm. you see that? So the right elbow is a bit higher than the shaft, so you, you wouldn't want to go any higher okay. or any closer. I think that that's maxed out. You right. could even let it out and you will start letting that out as you go longer anyway yes so when you swing back can you see how your left shoulder is moving moving down beautifully 
So there is some extension, tilt and turn. There's all three components, but the, with the short shots, the left shoulder down is a good cue. But where we run into a few issues is when we start to come into impact, you can see here, you have maintained or even increased a little bit the shaft lean. Now, the shaft lean, as I say, is always um, tends to be attributed as the piece that's um, causing the dig. It's, a, it's really, it's the piece that's causing the down. This is a, a, a trajectory of the butt of the club issue. Yeah. So from here, if I drew a little line on here like this, just to give you an idea, you'll see that that butt of the club isn't rising at a very fast rate no. or a good rate. It's coming up some, yeah. but there's that little bit of um, stay down and forwards with the handle, staying downwards and forwards with the handle. And that's the part that's stopping, causing you to... Yeah, well, it's caused it because some of those shots were actually heavy shanks. They yeah. were, they were. So the radius is bottoming out because the radius has, as it's even if you tried to line it up, you just bury the club in, under the ground. Yeah. So the radius has got to rise. Uh, short baseline shots, we can get that rise from the lead shoulder. Can you see? Yeah. So I get you to practice keeping your setup, even do the low shots, so you you preserve some of the down that you've got, and then take it off with that lead shoulder. Mm. I practice hitting the ground still. Can you see? Mm. So you're raising the shoulder, but you're putting the down in with your your alignment, your geometry, right? Yeah. All right, and then you can take it off with the shoulder, and you should find you're just getting that equalization, that nice little sort of brushy thump on the ground. Yeah. Good. That's it. Yeah. Good. Can you see how your that you're sort of giving yourself that confidence of the contact that you, you, you know you've got down to get yeah, to the ground. I can feel the bounce better as well. That yeah, way. yeah. It feels much smoother through the turf. Yeah, because the bounce can be over, over relied on. The bounce yeah. is useful, but it, it's, it's not useful if you're, st if you're crashing into the ground, the bounce won't save you. No. Much better already, yeah. First ball, well done, brilliant. So a little insight there into some short game practice. They're just practicing the sort of standard baseline chip shot today. But uh, over the course of the three days, the guys will get to practice pitching, higher shots and uh, bunker shots as well. Out here on the range today, we're practicing driver. Um, I've got Jasper and Sophie with me as well here. So they're just gonna talk us through their experience of camp so far and, and how their driver practice is going. So tell me what you learned today, guys. Lots. Uh, yeah, quite a lot, <laughs> actually. Um, I, I, I play a lot of tennis outside of golf, okay. and uh, I found that with my when I'm trying to hit a topspin tennis shot, I turn my wrist this way. Okay. And obviously that generates a lot of topspin for the tennis. But when I'm playing with my driver, I found that I was doing the same thing when I was getting to the top of my backswing, which then caused me to come on the inside and get that push and that top, um, which is obviously never a good thing. And so what Andy was telling me was to basically do the reverse of that and come and hit and then he said feel the V down and this uh, trail palm or lead palm basically is as flat as I can get it and not twisting that way nice. almost yeah not bad good. almost not bad nice one. yeah <laughs> and so for you yeah. practice your driver today yeah I found that um, some of my balls I kind of send pretty high up into the uh, um, not so great so in order to sort of you know get away from that making sure that my head is kept still um, sort of warming up with some shots you know any half swings um, and then really making sure that my weight is right straight line towards the ball with the left arm and then make sure I've got that right stack and tilt grip and then keeping it low and then obviously just coming through that looks really nice. oh. yeah so that was my problem there, but realized I didn't have my glove on, so top tip, wear your glove. <laughs> First time, Jasper, at camp? Yeah, absolutely, so yeah. For your second. second time, okay. highly recommend. One sentence or two that would be your experience of your first camp, Jasper? Um, it's enlightening. It's the best way to take charge of your game, for sure. You learn so much. And with all the coaches, they've all got their specialities within the stack and tilt system. You can learn so much and make so many changes to make the best possible golf swing. Absolutely. For me I'd say hard work but it pays off and worth every penny. Great to see you guys. It's really nice to meet you this week and I hope it's not the last time that we meet in person. Definitely not. Definitely not. That's more like it. Yep. Standing that standing up the higher, isn't it? Yeah. Tends to, to get that. yours drop out the sky a little bit. Yeah a little quicker. bit, yeah. 
Yeah, that's better. Contact's nicer too. Yeah. But that height is something I've not had in my game no. before. So no. it's quite nice to see it back, even if it yep. was a bit high. Is that poor? I didn't see that bar. A little bit, but it was okay. more uh, than uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so two, the two shots, I saw three. Low trajectory. Yes. Um, deflected cut and pull, which is a pattern that would tell you that it's probably coming down too steep. The internal rotation of the shoulder. The shaft's too steep there. The hands aren't in enough, so we'll keep um, abducting the trail shoulder to move the hands around from farther from the ball. And you would know by the ball flight, if you see that low, steep squeezer where you're just squeezing it off the ground too much and you see it cut to the right, pull, cut, and low would tell you that this thing's too high. So this comes down, you see how high that is. That's uh, clubs passing through top of the humerus or shoulder. That's right. Just chip this one out there just like that. Hold it. Yeah. You can see how that's shallower and draws. Now go. Very good. That's shallower. Come take a look, please. So we were further away from the ball. And I told you to retract your shoulder and to pull your arm around you as opposed to not retracting your shoulder and lifting the club up. This one would come down too steep and then you'd pop up. This one would come down too steep and you'd pop up, raise the shaft up like that and push them out to the right. It's got a few minutes here. I'm, sit I'm sat down with Nick, Nick Hardy. Uh, how did you discover Stack and Tilt? What was your uh, sort of story there? About five years ago or less. It was before COVID, uh -huh. having watched your fantastic uh, Stack and Tilt videos on Thank you, YouTube. Sir. Thank you. Also, Nick Taylor's videos. And I think Nick had done a, uh, a video blog or vlog of attending this camp he here did, in He did, he did. That's right, that's right, that's right. And, well, the first thing I did after that was Google Stack and Tilt Camp Spain or Europe. Yeah and signed up immediately. One final thing from you, mm. give me your, your main takeaway from camp. Someone watching this video that like you watched Nick's video back in 2019, yeah. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the one thing that makes this special and, and maybe different from anything else? Um, there are so, so many special elements and aspects. Um, it's almost but just the overall experience is something not to be missed and preferably something to be experienced over and over and over again. Nick, thanks for your support. Well, Rob, thank you so much. Lovely to chat. So lots of things going on here. Camp day three, We're coming towards the end of this uh, superb three days, really. And uh, as, you've as you've heard from the guys, uh, lots of learning going on. It's been a, it's been a really great, a great trip so far. Um, let's go and check out some putting next. Tracing the arc, face square to the arc. Beautiful. Okay, let's, let's go back to our station over there. Let's hit some more. We might jump back to this one again. Yeah. Before we hit this one, make, make a practice stroke to see if you can program your body to do the same thing as you were doing on the stick over there. No increase in the pressure here in your left hip because your lower body is still. There you go. Soften your arms a little bit. There you go. That's nice. Yeah, okay. Hold your finish. Hold it, hold it. Can you feel that there's more space here now? Yeah. So that, that's your arms. That's the arc that we're not tracing. That's your arms pushing away from your body. Can you see how that gap is now bigger over here? That's the arc going out, which would make it into a push. So yeah. if you take your setup again, practice swing, the distance you have here now should be the same on the follow through. Instead of increasing that distance. Yeah. Good, okay, here we go. No. Keep the pressure the same here on the hip. There you go, there you go. Okay. Okay, let's have a look, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the iPad here. Target line, center of the hole, center of the ball. Our baseline so we can see the arc. The aiming is better on this one. Can you see how the face is square? You remember well, the first one, how you well, were aimed more well, to the right? Well. Okay. Backstroke. There's your little arc, yeah. which is good. 
So now we're coming down. Where's the face going? It's going out. To the right, yeah. So you have your arc on the back stroke, but instead of arcing in like this, I'm just drawing this with my finger, yeah, it's not yeah, the best yeah. arc probably. You have the backswing nice, but then the follow through is out. Yeah. And then to make it go straight, what do you do with the face? Close the you close, you twist it close. And sometimes that can work. <laughs> because if you look at this ball, if we just look where the ball starts, that, that's also why the white line is there. It's pretty close to straight, it might start like 0.5 degrees to the right. It's pretty straight. Uh, uh. But it's just knowing when the technique doesn't work anymore, when you suddenly start missing more to the right, uh. it's important for you to know what that is, where that uh. comes from. Uh. Because otherwise you start doubting everything. Uh. Oh, it's, my, it's the grip of my putter. Uh. Maybe I should buy a new putter. Maybe I should put the ball more forward. <laughs> and then I filmed this one as well. Let me draw a line on that one. So this one is parallel to the red stick. Yes, I'm just drawing that white line so we have the same reference as on the yeah. other video. You can see how that arcs in just a touch and then when you follow through, you can see how that face is not outside the target line. Yeah. Yes, you can basically see that the face is pointing in the same direction as over there, but here it's square to the arc and over there it's twisted close to the arc. And when we were practicing this drill with the stick over there, you would see in the first couple of practice shots that your backswing is easy to do for you, but the follow through you would push the shaft off because that's just what you're used to doing. Yeah, yeah. So you just need lots of practice on this thing or a cardboard box, whatever it is, something straight that you can put the shaft against so you can feel the follow through and how that stays on the, on the stick. And that's why I was asking you a couple of times to hold the finish so you can check that for yourself instead of going off and twist it. Good, good, that's the feel. One and two. So the rhythm is a little smoother in instead of just hitting it too hard. Good, there you go, keep this stable. Nice, that's good, you see that? Leading edge in the middle, ball slightly left of that, like in the grid, okay? There you go, just, just hit this putt, roll it towards Rob over there. There you go, that ball starts straight, you see that? Yeah. That had no push because yeah. you, are, you were arcing that thing nicely. It had no pull because you were not twisting that face too far yeah. closed. Okay. Now the real deal. A little insight there into some stack and tilt putting. Um, there's a system for putting as well. Timo's an expert instructor and uh, I hope you found that enjoyable. If you'd like a full video on stack and tilt putting that I could shoot with uh, Timo, if you'd like to see more putting, uh, let's say this video needs to get 100 likes and 100 comments. Get down in the comments. Let me know if you'd like a video on stack and tilt putting and uh, we'll see what we can do. These days for me are fun. Uh, I enjoy them. I would be doing the same thing, whether it's in Miami or uh, I feel fortunate to be able to come over here and um, reconnect with all these guys and Rob and people who come back. Um, and and what, that's one of the value I always tell the guys in the training program to make pictures and, and document the process. Demonstrate how a system could be used, the same system could be used for putting, chipping, irons, and driver. The first ball Sophie hit were uh, curved to the right. And I told Sophie when she swung back that uh, her hand path um, Herve tended to go up too much and then there's that bowler finish with the uh, shoulders turned more than the hips turned more than the knees. Uh, Jenny the extension and the side tilt you see how her neck is tilted to the side see the visor how it's tilted and the ear is down and hear how the heads move forward and, the, and upward and not as don't quite have the side tilt. So this was the board. This will, these pictures, Jasper, will look a lot like Nick's coming through. See how the head would go back and down, how there's more, too much side tilt. This was the bowler practice, reducing the side tilt back. Notice how we have a wider stance there when we started there too. There's that right shoulder again, retracting retracting, the humerus abducting, the club going around. That's a nice one here. Look how much better this one is than this one. That's nice work. 
That's the left knee flex, the right knee straight, and the right hip to the midline, and the side tilt to the left. I would just close again by saying um, I I appreciate everyone's practice. I know the and I know how it feels because I've lived it as well. But um, uh, if you if you walk away with a better picture of a, and a few diagrams and to know by your ball flight something to do to help it, you would have a better idea what to try to do and a better idea of how to help yourself. With that, um, I'd just say thank you again. Uh, I, uh, I guess we're, it's time for dinner. Right? It is. <laughs> Probably time to shut this thing down. If uh, I used all the footage I had here, this video would be about six hours long. Um, but I do hope you've enjoyed a little insight into Stack and Tilt Camp and, and what we do here. Uh, if you have any questions about camp or Stack and Tilt in general, get down in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to respond to everybody. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, if you're new to Stack and Tilt, please consider watching one of the videos on the channel. You can check out uh, this playlist right here. This one's uh, on the 10 words, or you can check out this one here, which is about the driver.